G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Aventi Behind the Hype. Now previously, if you haven't seen, we've already discussed the brand name, the design, where we've come from, how we've got to now, and the business model. Today is gonna be a bit more on that, but we're gonna talk and discuss the future and the evolution of the brand and where we're going. Exactly, and, yeah, well, well that's well, <laughs> one yeah. year is what people thought would be around for yeah. one year. The doubters. They, the doubters. they were they were skeptical. They said, oh, you won't be along. You won't be around more than one year. It's yeah. all hype. That's true. And that fueled that yeah. fueled us a lot. Yeah, like yeah, um yeah, we, yeah. we're only two and a half years now mm. old. Yeah. And um, you know, look at the incredible amount uh, that we've been able to I come. mean that one meeting, one of the best meetings that I've had. It was it was an, a really interesting meeting, right, with one of the biggest watch retailers in the world like the biggest right i yeah, can't biggest luxury watch any retailer. names yeah. but one of the questions that came up because they didn't know they were like oh how how old is you know how long have you been around for yeah. and i was i was like oh, do you know what i'm gonna ask him oh how, how long do you do you think we've been around for and they replied oh it's 10 years yeah, eight to ten years. I yeah, think they said. Yeah. yeah, and that was and that was we were just two years old at that. Yeah, st- just like just under two years or so. So what we've built, we started with something that really got the attention of people that really questioned the whole industry. It's like, how can you sell a watch where other competitors are selling it for a million dollars, right? Yeah, or a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars. How can you bring that down? to a five thousand dollar price point yeah how did you guys do it and yeah. that i think a lot of people thought it was like like a gimmick or something but fundamentally what we've built is something that is so so grounded in the future that people don't realize how much effort energy and focus we have in building this this legacy that we're that we've got going on now yeah. because a lot of people don't see the systems, the processes, the thinking, the theories, the study, the, the what we're building behind what they see on you know in on social media or on our website, they don't see that you know we're developing our own custom software to manage uh, inventory, to manage our team, to manage our communication. We are building you know all of these things to help the business run to scale, right? Yeah. Um, one of the first things that we had on our like little list to discuss today was yeah. to talk about um, the where we've come from from completely decentralized uh, business into moving into uh, our own production facility in Switzerland, um, and what where we came from, why we did what we did, and where we're going with yeah. that because. There, there, there's benefits and and disadvantages to the model that we've had. So yeah, the benefit sure. of de- decentralized people go, oh, where are you based? Well, Aventi has no office. There's no single location where our team resides. Right? Yeah, yeah well, have, our staff work everywhere. all remote, all, 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 all around the world. world. Yeah, yeah. And how can you run a business as big as ours? Right? Completely decentralized. Mm-hmm. Like completely. We're talking. There's there's no there's no office where people go to yeah. work. Like people don't yeah. realize that that is what we've built. And when you look at our brand, you don't you wouldn't think that, yeah. right? So to in and order to do that, every aspect too, from manufacturing to sales yeah, to customer yeah. service. Well, every in order to do that, we we've, we've had to build very effective lean structures to be able to communicate on different time zones. People don't realize how hard it is to mm-hmm. talk or to get things done to be effective over multiple time zones, mm-hmm. right? Without an office, right? Yeah. So our approach to business, this is not my first business. I have a few other businesses as well, including Aventi. And what I've done is I've taken everything that I've learned from all of these different projects and everything is, every business is helping each other. And that's why we're able to perform and outperform a lot of um, high brands a lot of brands that have been around for for decades we're able to move faster get better results you know grow quicker yeah. because of our unique approach and we've taken this approach into all aspects of watchmaking so the sapphire using sapphire coming back to our first point what you know got us 
hyped up, yeah. um, was working with different kinds of uh, companies and different kind of partners that we found to do the things that other people weren't doing, right? So we went to where the factories were all around the world. We weren't like trying to go, okay, where's the cheapest labor? Let's go there yeah. and make something and sell it. It's like, right. you know, how, come, how can we take this concept, this design, this idea with this material and make it a reality? How yeah. do we actually do that? So, I mean, when we talk about development and the future, it's like taking these principles of decentralized thinking, right? Yeah. Applying it with partners all around the world, right? And to produce things that didn't exist before in a way that, is scalable sustainable for us as well because that was that's the other thing you can do something once but it's going to cost a lot of money right and it depends yeah. who you go to and this is the um i mean we, what makes our insta lives when we were doing that really popular was when we would bring you behind the curtain right we'll show you what actually goes on and i think one example of that is is that in switzerland there are companies that provide services for watch companies, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we've, we've met some of them, like watch design yeah. companies. They would provide their services. We know, I don't want to mention any names, but yeah. certain brands were designed by, you know, third parties. Watches were completely concept, to, you know, ready, and they paid a certain big fee, and that's that. They take that yeah, concept. And then, yeah, yeah. And, they, and the same thing goes with materials. The way it works is that, um, a material supply in Switzerland will provide the material to manufacturers, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't know where that material is coming from. So a lot of what happens generally is that you've got these guys that are um, providing the service in Switzerland, but doesn't necessarily mean that is a Swiss product as well, right? Yeah. So they'll be getting it from other countries, bringing it in, processing them, passing them off as Swiss materials, then putting a massive price tag on it, selling it to the you know, manufacturers of the brand, and then they would have to put their margins on top. So there you have a million dollar piece, right? Yeah. That's how it eventually gets to that stage. So instead of going through these layers of, of deal, deal making mm -hmm. and, you know, trade, we just went straight to the source and we try to find the production of yeah. that. So right now, I'll give you one example right now. And people don't know this. We're working on uh, with a company in Korea for uh, a new fiber material for our bands, for our... Uh, carbon, special carbon material that we're working on. So there's, there's multiple layers of things that we're building right now. But that is called Dyneema. Dyneema is used for chainsaw gloves, right? So the concept is extremely light, extremely strong, right? And how do we take that and make a band out of it, right? It hasn't been done yet. So we find the you know partners in different countries. We work with them. We m modify the material. Sometimes we develop our own materials as well, right? So people can look at us and go, "Oh, you just sold sapphire for really cheap," but they don't understand the principles of creating that is what we're doing to solidify our future in this industry, yeah. unlike any other brand, right? And that's that's kind of what defines us. Now coming back to that point with us, what I said before is us going from decentralized, completely decentralized model into a more um, hybrid version where we have facility in Switzerland. That's where we're heading at the moment. So incorporation, getting our own, you know, our own place there. Um, it's to really solidify us in with perception as well. So one thing is to to feel that, okay, well, they're not just floating around you know without a base now okay they've got their own facility second is there are the disadvantages of being agile is that sometimes you can't control everything yeah. and when you can't control everything you have things come up and because it's not your partner's priority to deal with your product we had this knockback already yeah, where exactly. we we would be knocked back on production because we weren't high priority for our partners mm -hmm. and because of that we need to step up and take control. Now, on the other side, it's like being decentralized. We're completely agile. Like we can do whatever we want, whenever we want, and there's no risk, right? We can just stop. Okay, you know, I was working on graphene for a while. Like if we developed our own facilities to do that, it would be millions of dollars to do that, right? Yeah. And we'd be going around in circles. We're still developing that same material, graphene case, like because the type of graphene that we want is very, very special, very difficult to produce. It's almost two years yeah. of work 
for like a year and a half. We're still, we it's still going. We've a few developments. It's stuff. still happening now, but yeah. it's with our partner. So it doesn't cost us. It's not like it's a massive cost because they're adding it into what their core business is. It's, you know, if we were trying to do that, no, there's no way we could, we could fund that. No, it's, it's just, it's just like, it doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. So because the graphene is one part of our, you know, offering that we're working on, right? Yeah. So, but then on the other side, you know, that's the positive of being completely decentralized. But when you look at the, the, the disadvantages is that we're not able to, we're not able to really um, speed things up. So we're a bit yeah. slower than what we could be, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the quality control, we are very strict with the college control. We are very, very strict, right? But that doesn't mean our partners are, right? So that's a disadvantage. So we're constantly getting delayed um, in certain aspects of what we yeah. produce because we, we yeah. say to the partners, it's not good enough. Yeah. Whereas with and us, it's time won't to send it happen. back. They've yeah. got to fix it yeah. before it gets to our standard, and then we have to then ensure the quality of the whole finished product. Yeah. And there's so many layers yeah. that it goes through. Mm. And yeah, so, very... yeah. I mean, when we, uh, when as we're looking towards centralizing certain aspects, that's why I said hybrid. We mm. will centralize certain aspects as we continue to grow. Yeah. But I mean, you look at a company like Rolex, control every single part. They produce their own gold, right? That's where we're heading, you know. Yeah. So we're doing it in a way which is sustainable to us, right? But also done in a way that's smart. Is we're doing the things at the right time. We we can't rush into that because you know it, it's an investment. We got to we we are still using our resources to develop with partners. So for example, right now, like I said, with Dyneema, but we've got a new type of sapphire. That we're working on mm -hmm. and this is really really exciting because this is in my opinion it is better than sapphire crystal uh, we have more control over it uh, in terms of the colors that we can produce like colors you've never seen before yeah. like ever seen before and so these colors are something really special we're bringing out very very soon yeah um, i don't want to say too much about it uh, but uh, it's that's one aspect the the density of the material it is not as hard in terms of the MOH rating as sapphire, but because of the structure, the crystalline structure of the crystal is a, is is essentially a nanomaterial. It it is more impact resistant, right? So it's more practical as a watch as well, yeah. right? Not that you know it's great. We haven't we've hardly had any issues with clients like smashing their <laughs> sapphire pieces, right? Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's not it's not common, not not at all. No. Um, but what what I think is just good to know is that this is the next generation of sapphire mm -hmm. this is it this is a step up from sapphire but we before yeah. we elaborate into these crazy materials and hanu's uh, the mad scientist behind well, the, the scenes he's yeah, yeah. He's, he's got a lot a lot of different watches and designs and materials planned for the coming years mm. and um Movements. we're working on a lot yeah. but but the first you know step is what we've done right like where, where, where are we now and what we haven't talked about yet in the previous video is well, okay, the, the one to two year stage for Aventi, right? We've got a lot of lovers out there and a lot of haters. The haters and doubters are all saying, look, Aventi wouldn't be around in one year. You guys are going to fail. You guys are going to go down. You're going to drop. Your value is going to be this and that. And then you've got the extreme support we've had from thousands mm. of people around yeah, yeah. the world. You know, we operate in over 100 countries. We deal with people all around the world. And these guys have been supporting us since the start or come later. And the next logical thing was to compete with the big boys and ensure that brand longevity was to go Swiss. At the start of Aventi, we wanted to launch the so, Swiss movement. Yeah. But we had a lot of barriers to entry. Uh, pricing mm. was extremely high. And when launching a new brand, it didn't make sense. So we sacrificed profits in the early stages. We built a name for ourselves and then we went the Swiss transition. How did it start? Why did we do it? How did we get so just just now? to be really clear? You said ensure the longevity of the brand, right? But yeah. that, that, I don't want it to take away from our Hong Kong movement. No, pieces, we stand by right? that. It, it's, yeah. So just to be clear, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the reason, and we discussed this in the last video, right? Yeah. Going Swiss was is something that is, um, like I said, moving from a completely decentralized model into. Um, a hybrid model is yeah. is kind of that same notion as us going okay well Swiss we we kind of 
I mean, it makes sense for a, for a luxury watch brand to go there. Um, yeah. Our the piece that I'm wearing today is the 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 ghost the um, the sapphire with the sapphire skull, and this piece is um, is our first uh, Swiss movement inside, the, and it was created with Olivier Mori, um, and he was the maker. Uh, he was one of the guys that helped build the RM001, 002, and I think 003. He was on the team at AP Concept. Yeah. And he had worked on that movement. He had built those yeah. movements, right? He helped to make the high-end flying tourbillons for AP yep. uh, many, many years ago. He was the youngest on a team of four, actually, that mm. were commissioned. So the story, after talking to Olivier, I mean, you've, yeah. you've hung out with yeah, him as yeah. well, but the, the, what's really interesting to note is that he was frustrated like he was frustrated at how inefficient things were like mm -hmm. screws being put in the wrong places very complex procedures to actually produce and assemble the the movements and so our movement it's not about being over complicated right right it's about going what is the most effective way we can build and design and create this tool beyond mm -hmm. right to produce right for how can we do it so it's easy to service right robust robust efficient, yeah. super strong less parts less yeah. things to go wrong and so it's yeah. it's counterintuitive essentially in horology, right you yeah. have oh this is the greatest feat of watch made very 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 complex and so well, you don't need to be that complex right mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean it's not you know it's not incredible which our movement is incredible we went and focused more on the finishing rather than you know yeah. over complicating like the tourbillon function it's a tourbillon that's what yeah. it is right the accuracy is important and ours is extremely accurate right yeah plus minus four seconds per day we Talking about that finishing, you know, we, uh, some of our partners, you know, they even mm, make for the, some yeah. of the big brands like Patek and Pernell for plates and other parts. And we originally sent the finishing back and Olivier said yeah. this too and said, look, it's not good enough. We did a ceramic coating yeah. with gold engraving, collage yeah. finishing, beveled edges. Well, and and they're enough. like, what yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. Like and then the finished product, these guys that provide for some of the biggest names were, wow, they, yeah. they were yeah. Wow, that's yeah. what the, the yeah. message is back. Yeah, I'm amazed yeah. by it. Yeah. Because we, we're not simply following the mold that's been set for decades. Mm -hmm. We're not incrementally changing or improving our product. We're a young brand that needs to yeah. make massive waves. And so we put a lot of focus, a lot of attention on this. Like having the pelage on, on our movement, on our Swiss movement, having the beveled and polished edges, making sure that everything is perfectly aligned. Um, it's been, it's been a, a, a massive journey. And, you know, going Swiss is, is a big step for us. And I think, and coming back to this whole point about, um, you know, Hong Kong movements or whatever, like it's irrelevant really. There are certain laws in Switzerland where you can't bring in pieces that say, Swiss made, right? Or Swiss on them, right? Um, from outside of Switzerland, right? And we built our movement, Switzerland, 100%, right? Mm -hmm. Now we sent them to Hong Kong to, to get tested, to work them in our cases, to check things and, you know, just to make sure everything's all good, right? And then we send them back to Switzerland and guess what? They get held up at customs. Says you can't do that. It's like, what are you talking about? They're from Switzerland. No, they came from Hong Kong, and so we we either had to pay a massive fine in the hundreds of thousands of Swiss francs, or have to or, or, or allow them to destroy our movement. And so, you know, unfortunately, it wasn't the best feeling for us. But we had to let those movements go. But it just went to show. It's like they can't even tell what's coming from a different country yeah. or not, you know, yeah. that, that there's a, th yeah, there's a lot of other things that there's a lot of other crazy stories that we've had. I don't want to yeah. say maybe in a few years we can talk about yeah. them, but uh, we've been That's blocked. Some, we've uh, been, yeah. you know, some juicy stories yeah. and w without mentioning names, we can say a few or we'll elaborate a few, but yeah, originally what, with mm. this Swiss movement was to really, you know, 
uh, please and take a swing at the purists out there. Mm. And and we find a lot of our clients uh, do collect these big name brands, yeah. Yeah. Patek, Richard Mille, AP, Rolex, et cetera, right? And they love their Aventis. And we're going to elaborate that in a yeah, different yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. But it was really to take a swing at them. And a lot of people will say, well, hey, look, you guys are disruptors. You know, you guys are the are the next this, or you're trying to be like this company and this brand, but we're not. We are literally yeah. doing our own thing. Yeah. We're in our own lane. Yeah. We're doing, it's essentially watchmaking 3.0 yeah. from everything. The business model is set up different. You, there's no other everything. brand that doesn't have an office. There's yeah. no other brand. It's like there is no other brand yeah. in the world that does not have an office like us. Yeah. There's no other brand that is 100% concierge. Uh -huh. That's completely concierge based there's yeah. no other brand that is only online present when i'm talking brand i'm talking like luxury watch brand yeah. in, in a price bracket there's no other brand there's no other brand that provides the specs the specifications that we offer at the value that we offer mm -hmm. and as a result guess what well we're in huge demand like we have thousands of people waiting to be contacted by us. Yeah. There are people that have been waiting months to get a call from us because yeah. we are so overloaded with, with applications. Yeah. We have a limited mm -hmm. supply in production, not limited edition, yeah. but we are physically limited in how much we can produce. Yeah. This skull in this takes several months to make, right? Yeah. This isn't just a put, put it in a machine, press a button and you're done. Yeah. Like, We've got um, some content now. You can read about how the skull is made for, as an example, Sapphire Crystal as well. It's like what we're doing stuff that is not, is not mm -hmm. really designed to be scalable yeah. in, in, a, in a mass production way. Right? Yeah. And, and because of that, you, you know, we've got, yeah. I mean, we also have ext extremely high quality, right? Extreme with the best materials like titanium from Japan, right? We, we source all the materials ourselves properly right we make sure it's legitimate we test things we do lab testing everything is 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 so detail oriented mm -hmm. with what we produce and so as a result it becomes rare yeah like it's just well, this this exclusivity so yeah this balance hard to make of demand. so much demand yeah the balance of demand and production and people will easily say well hey look if you guys have thousands of people waiting why don't you just hire more staff and it's not about that we're balancing the waiting time in luxury, you need to know it's exclusive. You know, it's hard to get. Not everyone can access it, right? And that's what we do. We spend the time to get but, to I mean, know it's, everyone. It's, it's, a, it's a result of our passion for what we do yeah. rather than a strategy yeah. where you simply just, you know, decide to take certain actions. No, this yeah. it takes us very long to produce these pieces. Yeah. And also, we are not, interested in mass mass scaling these things how mm. many times have people try to throw money at us like, yeah and we've said no we've said no and like and to any, scale a like, person that messages us and just says send the order without talking to them they're the ones that usually get the no so yeah we we, 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 we reject available. people yeah, yeah we reject people and and when people are so upfront like oh i own you know ferraris lamborghinis and pateks and richard mills why should i have to tell you about you know answer your questions just yeah. get, send me the order and we say okay see you later mate yeah. <laughs> like sorry mate, this isn't for yeah, you you know and you, we do it yeah. in a nice way but yeah we, we've got mm. some funny stories and that's that's a story for another oh, yeah. time you've, you've been you've had some y yeah but yeah. but it's about like we we take the time and energy to get to know our clients and answer every question and mm. share the brand passion yeah. with them when, when we talk about the future of eventy where we're going Mm. This this movement, and we, he's working too on future complications, new watches, new movements, actually, in the coming years. But we're here for the long haul, guys. And this is to show that we this isn't just a one-year, two-year plan. We mm. want to be competing with the big names for years and years to come. We don't and want to. We are. We, we are, yeah. It's not even, okay. But we're, taking, we're not, com well, first of all, we're not competing. Yeah. Right. It's not about that. We, we are building something of huge value and something that's special. And there is, and I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, why do, why do guys like watches? Like, why do people like watches? And it's just, there's something so interesting about knowing that that's, that thing on your wrist is, is, is made, is, is an engine that's running there. It's real. It's physical. There's all this movement into you know, in NFTs, metaverse, and, you know, the future of, 
living, decentralized, you know, basic um, income and universal basic income and, and, and where things are heading, right? And on and people wearing smartwatches and and when you when you compare that and you bring back and you go back to these pieces, right? These pieces that you can wear on your wrist. It's just something special. I can't even really explain it. But when, I don't know. Do you remember the first time you got into to watches? It's actually you getting me into yeah. watches yeah, <laughs> okay. in the luxury yeah, scene yeah. back back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but the the, <laughs> the feeling, right? Like I think a lot of the people, even if you're watching, this is back when we were eighteen, by the way. <laughs> yeah. If you if you're watching as well, it's like, have you ever thought about like why do you like watches so much? I mean, it sounds so silly that you need you don't need it to tell the time. Like I don't even use my. Uh, I mean, I do sometimes, but use your phone to tell the time, right? A lot of people do, yeah. So it's, I mean, a lot of people, and you, and you can tell a lot about a person about the watch that they have, and that's what's special about a venti as well. Linking it back to the customers, it's like mm-hmm. if you see someone else with an venti, you know that they know what's up, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's so great. Like I I was in Dubai, you know, a couple of months ago, and I'm just you know kept bumping into people who knew knew us, right? And um, I remember just sitting there and, and people come up and just like, because they've seen us on lives and they've seen our videos, they go, it, the way they talk to you is like a friend, like, yeah. like they know you. Yeah. And I know that people with Aventis, they, they love them. And, and I know this is probably for our next, <laughs> next episode, but uh-huh. a lot of people prefer wearing the Aventi over their other pieces because of the meaning behind yeah. it. Not just the meaning, but also... Yeah, it's a statement piece. You get more attention than other pieces, generally. Compliments, yeah, you get more comp- starter. Yeah. But, but just that feeling of the watch is so special. And like, I have crazy watches. You have crazy watches, right? And honestly, like this is, I mean, I'm not being, I am being biased. Like I can't help but be biased, but really um, trying to be objective, right? Consciously trying to be objective. I think when you compare like a Patek, and Aventi, like wearing it, it's, I mean, you can say it's a completely different brand, blah, blah, blah. But it's just when, I don't know, when you guys see what we've got coming, I've see, like I've held our future pieces. Yep. And they are, I was talking to Hamish, he's on the team, and he said that, I was like, can you describe what you felt when you when you got that piece, right? This, the, the, um, the, the Wraith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <no. laughs> we'll give the name, the Wraith. <laughs> and he was like, do you know what? He was like, you know, the A11s were, were good, right? But this feels like a brand has come to maturity. Like, this is it. Uh-huh. And I was like, that's it. Because I remember when I got it, I opened it up. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is, we're done. We've made it. Like, this is it. <laughs> this is the one. Yeah. Like, this is it. And I think that that feeling that I had when I first got in, I, I bought a cheap watch in a central market in, in Adelaide. And it was one of those, like, Daff- I have a brand, Daffetan, one of those Daffetan style skeletonized watches. And I was just obsessed with it because it just looked amazing. I think there's something mesmerizing about how a watch looks, right? For sure. And yeah. this piece, the next, you know, our future, and what we're developing, we've taken up concepts that have worked. We've removed things that didn't work in our previous product. And we're just constantly improving. And that is what, our future is mm-hmm. it's a reflection of the current moment learning from that moment understanding what works what doesn't work putting in place a plan executing that plan and realizing it that's as simple as it is yeah. and that's what we constantly do and people don't realize when they're talking you know in the past badly about us we were there reading 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 yeah. learning replying yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> but we would take they that used to reply doesn't it yeah anymore. i don't know it's too stressful <laughs> No, no, but we've improved so much. Yeah. But we, we take that feedback and we improve. A lot of people go, yeah. oh, you guys. We did listen a lot. Yeah. We did listen yeah. to a but lot. But people don't realize yeah. that, hey, maybe these guys mm-hmm. listen. Do you think other brands are listening? I don't think no. so. I don't think so. No. Right? Mm-hmm. And so what they rely on is hiring a new CEO, trying to revamp, rebuild, and then, okay, that works. Cool. Keep hiring until it fails. Hire another CEO. Like, And I feel that that connection that we have by us being real, by us being honest, being on the phones, talking to every single client that has an event, has spoken mm-hmm. with us, every single client. 
has mm-hmm. spoken with us. Like, not just like a salesperson. For our, our team is very boutique. Right? Mm-hmm. We're connected. Yeah, I mean, if you buy a Rolex from AD, like that person has got no connection to the top. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, we are more, you know, horizontal rather than a vertical yeah. system, right? Yeah, and so I mean, that's I think that's a good summary of of NT here for the long run, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 um, feel free to comment too, guys. If there's yeah. something that you want to hear more of or us to elaborate more of. Uh, there's a lot of nitty gritty stories in there too. Um, oh, I'd love to share some actually some juicy ones um, now if we can because when we went for the movement, um, a year after Aventi was done, this is when other brands, movement makers were reaching out to us mm. and they were rolling out the red carpet for yeah, us yeah. and they were inviting us to Switzerland and trying to get our business. So, you know, three or four companies invited us out and we asked them the question, well, hey, why do you want to work with us now? Why are you willing to open these doors mm. and lower your yeah, restrictions yeah, yeah. to allow us to enter? And one of them, without saying names, literally said, we see you guys as the next Richard Mill. Yeah. And we were there laughing, <laughs> couldn't believe it. And we didn't end yeah. up going with them, the, yeah, this yeah, particular yeah. company. But I mean, but that's a contrast to what you were saying. When we went there the first time, when I was like, okay, let's try yeah. They blocked us. Block, block, block. They pretty much laughed at us, shunned us. No, nah, not going to work. Gave us the cold like, shoulder. Yeah, you can do it. Just give us a million dollars. Yeah. And we'll do it for you. Throw you ridiculous know? prices at yeah. us. Yeah. And now it still came with the high price, right? We still had to come in with the high price, but they're just the willingness to work with us mm. and the want to please and partner. And it, it was a know. different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, now you want to work with they us. They see the vision like, too. Yeah. And we'll talk about, well, why this is key story why did mm. you choose to launch the a13 as the first swiss piece this is a, a key i feel like thing this is another video our story, yeah? <laughs> like, well, we'll just, just keep, keep the camera j- just a, a quick point I'll, of I'll it and we'll like elaborate that, yeah. another video but why the a13 people will say well hey look i'm not a skull guy um why did you guys do a sapphire skull as your first swiss watch and this is i mean it's a wacky <laughs> concept but like i well, I don't know. People probably don't know, but I'm a I'm a musician by like official, like I don't know what would you call it trade. Well, well study. study. You studied I studied it back music. in the day. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. was your and, background? Yeah. yeah. And so there's a big creative aspect of of eventy, right? Mm-hmm. And so a deeper meaning in what we do is always there. It's not like we whack things together and try to figure out oh, how do we sell this. Yeah. And we crafted the A13. And it's not about capitalizing. Like if, if we wanted to just make profits and make oh, we uh, wouldn't, we millions wouldn't have done and millions this. of yeah. sales, we wouldn't have launched that. We, were, we wouldn't have first. done Like Skull is not for everyone. Yeah. Like if, if um, someone told me that, you know, I've got this cool Skull watch, I'd probably be like, nah, <laughs> I'm not really into Skulls. Like, I like, I mean, maybe, yeah, cool. Yeah. But um the reason why we did it, A13 Skull, um, the ghost, is because it represents death to tradition. And that that's was the, the symbolization. Yeah. Of, that was a symbol that we were bringing forward. And we, were, we really wanted to create something that represented us yeah. in a way that, in, in like a symbolic way, yeah. it's cool. And it's death like, is not the end, right? It's the, the beginning it's of the a new be- chapter. And in a lot of cultures, it's the yeah. beginning. It's the reincarnation. Yeah. Right? It leads to the reincarnation. And that's essentially the new chapter of Aventi as well. You know, So it's like really our entry into this, into a you know, Swiss engine, right? Yeah. Um, and to really signify that, okay, we're going to do something crazy. And the thing is, this piece is so incredibly complex like i've held this skull in my hand outside of the watch and it is it's insane yeah. like the amount of time that it takes to produce that it's it's phenomenal yeah. you can't you can't mm-hmm. simply put a block of sapphire into a machine hit a button and you're done it is so difficult mm-hmm. to cut first of all you need diamond tool diamond tip tools that will break because there's so much work to make this. The areas around the mouth and the eyes are so thin 
so thin that we could be finishing it by hand after months of work. Yeah, that's the and frustrating part. Yeah. So whenever we produce, we have to produce in a bit, of, you know, of excess. Right? Yeah. So all of that, we we took something that's you know really it's hundreds of thousands of dollars of value, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of the product, we know this because there's other companies that have sold yeah. something similar, right? But not even as yeah. complex as us. And made it in multiple parts. No yeah. one's done yeah. a single, single sapphire, sapphire skull sapphire. and then throw sapphire hands in there and loom and any reflective layers. It's I just, mean, look, yeah. a Rolex has one layer of anti-reflection underneath the glass. We have seven on both yeah. sides. Like, what, like we, we, we are not, we're pushing the standard. We're pushing the, what's possible yeah. as well. People, our partners look at us and go, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. like, but now, as we work with them, we develop with them, they're telling us, oh, we have this idea, but it's probably not going to be up to your standard. We're like, yeah, probably won't be. Yeah. <laughs> like, keep going. Yeah. Like, let's work together. Let's figure stuff out. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that when you have partners, like, you have to build a relationship with them and you have to make a connection with them and you have to pull them into your vision too. Mm -hmm. And there's all this stuff in business management system processes, relationships that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. We can talk about in these videos yeah. as well. And, yeah. and a lot of the things we do behind the scenes, and apart from making crazy watches and expanding what others aren't doing, is that value retention, right? And that mm -hmm. increase over time and keeping that, that demand versus production that ensures for years and years that this retains or increases value over time. And mm -hmm. with what we've got coming and what's going to be discontinued and the expansion of mm -hmm. the, the brand for years is, well, is the show. Fundamentally, we we've built something that is a mesmerizing product right that's at the core of for me mm -hmm. why you should wear a watch it's just to get lost in it and go like before this time. we were just yeah. looking at each other's watches yeah. just like yeah. man isn't this beautiful yeah like Anyone that has a blue sapphire eventy, congrats yeah. to you yeah. because in the light, <laughs> and we're by the beach where we are yeah. right now in in Australia, and oh my god, in the light, yeah. we're just like wow. And then that as well, the the mural yeah, that gets this a lot is of another, attention. Another level, <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, yeah, that a mesmerizing design. Right, that's what it has to be. The the race that's coming out is phenomenal. Like yeah. it is the best design I think yeah. that we've ever done like it is I, I, yeah, i've shown it to, demand. yeah i've and shown I'm, it to some people and it's like yeah that's and a lot one. of these things we're doing guys is is literally i won't do it here but we are giving the middle finger <laughs> to, the, to the watch industry and to other brands and we let you know now we're coming we're coming and we're here to stay and on that note we're going to end All this right, video because good. we'll do another episode <laughs> later up. but let All us right. know in the comments guys what uh you'd love to see more of what you'd like to hear let us know what if you like this content. And uh, mm. yeah, Hanu and I will, will come at you guys very shortly. Awesome. Look forward to Thank it. Thank you. Cheers, Thank mate. You.